Now, the second speaker, Mr. Gleb Nikitin. He is going on, and your applause is for his 15 minute speech. Give us a round of applause, please. Um, hello, everybody. As you know, 2018 wasn't like the best year for cryptocurrencies from the financial point of view. But at the same time, 2018 was the year uh, where a lot of infrastructure projects that would really speed up uh, the blockchain ecospace were born. Uh, we have seen multiple Procton projects launch and it was very productive in forms of development. And I really think that in 2019, we'll see a lot of applications and real world usage that would see based on these technologies. So um, you may have maybe heard about such thing as a trilemma that you can't make a fast, secure, and decentralized blockchain. Uh, I would actually strongly disagree with that. It's not a question that it is impossible, it's just hard to gain a mix between these three elements. But it is possible, you just have to find the right balance. So uh, let's start uh, uh, with a little introduction. My name is Gleb Nikitin and the last two years I have spent uh, building Madhash. Uh, it's a fast, fast multi proof of stake blockchain. Uh, we have launched our main net in June 2018. Uh, we have tested our network on 3 billion transactions for three months in a row and have seen the transaction speed of 60 to 80,000. Uh, we have made a lot of tests and uh, have seen the speed of transaction confirmation of three seconds from the time the user sends the transaction till the, user, uh, the final user actually receives it. And in our main net, we have uh, like current spikes that exceed sometimes 50,000 transactions a second. At glance, uh, we have fast network synchronization. Uh, we are a classical blockchain uh, with one second uh, block generation speed. And to store 10 millions of financial transactions, we require two and a half gigabytes of data. So let's now start with our main part. Uh, so why are actually blockchains slow? And what, the, what causes it? How to solve it? The first issue is the synchronization. The bottleneck of all the speed of blockchains is the synchronization. Uh, the main networks that are active now synchronize the blocks with each other node. And if in the process there is a slow node, it slows everything down. And it is not possible to sync fast. So in most blockchains, to synchronize the blocks through all the nodes, it takes about 20 seconds. Some modern blockchains uh, try to address it by reducing the number of nodes. They try to make like 20 nodes or 60 nodes. That surely helps to uh, make the synchronization faster, but it also uh, affects decentralization a lot and that's not a good thing. Uh, at MetaHash, we have tried to find a different path. We have tried to make speed tests and a tree structure not to limit the amount of nodes and still keep them permissionless but still uh, have good decentralization and good speeds. On this picture, uh, it's a, ma a map on how MetaHash blockchain is built. So we practically uh, take the incoming transactions, synchronize them, and uh, then they flow back, uh, back into the system, speeding up synchronization without actually affecting decentralization and making the node installment permissionless. But the main bottleneck of all blockchain synchronization are the cross-continental data synchronization. Let's say that we limit the node amount to just two nodes. And that are fast nodes with extremely fast internet channels, each 10 gigabytes. Gigabit, sorry. Uh, one is located in Europe and another is located in Asia. When we try to can establish a connection between these two, and synchronize a block, our effective speed would actually slow down to less than one gigabit. And that's why most of uh, proof of stake blockchains that limit the amount of nodes have the bottleneck of 2,000 or 4,000, uh, like max 8,000 transactions per second and speed. Why is the transaction amount important? Is because 
the consensus of any blockchain is very costly. So a consensus of every blockchain supported by multiple people costs a lot of financial resources. And if we can have a lot of transactions going through, we can lower down the price of each individual transaction and still uh, have enough financial funds uh, to pay for the consensus. And fast and inexpensive transactions award the Internet of Things needs of what uh, people needs. Uh, so we need fast and inexpensive transactions. We don't need high price transactions to flow more and to gain mainstream. What we at Meta has tried to do, uh, we tried to utilize huge amounts of small micro connections to seed all the, uh, all the tr individual transactions data to a lot of latency clusters. By doing that, we don't need to synchronize the uh, transactions between uh, all the continents, we already have all the transactions, so we can synchronize only the IDs and the signatures of the blocks. Another thing that slows down the blockchains uh, is achieving finality. Even if you have uh, very fast block times, and the, like, the least reasonable you can go to is like 0 0.5 seconds, but on based on our tests, like the real viable in a decentralized network is one second. So even if you so if you reduce block times to one second or zero 0.5, you still have a number of confirmations coming in. And that effectively reduces the speed of synchronization uh, to six or seven seconds until the uh, transaction can be considered fully confirmed. What was our idea on solving this problem is, was adding more validators uh, so we don't need so much, tr so much of confirmations. We can include a number of signatures on the way of, the, uh, of synchronizing the block, approving transactions so the end user wouldn't have to wait for finality for, as in the, for another block. He can get verifications from more of the network in one go. And that surely speed up the process very well. So what I'm trying to say uh, is that Optimizing blockchain speeds is more about optimizing network topology rather than blockchain itself, the blockchain structure. And the blockchain structure should be adopted by the way you find the, uh, to synchronize the network. Another very important factor when you consider a fast blockchain is storage. Uh, we have calculated that if a network runs at 50,000 transactions per second, it would generate 385 terabytes of data, and actually you would need to store it somewhere, and you have to design the network so it would be possible to operate it even when this threshold is crossed. Uh, our solution to that is we thought that an archive node must be introduced, and we have calculated that like with a uh, 20x reserve, it will cost about $100,080 per year to maintain the hardware for it, and if we multiply it by all the transactions that flow in through the year, we would still get a very healthy economical price of storage for each transaction. But a real question is how would the network be able to operate uh, when each of the nodes doesn't have the full history of the blockchain on it? Our take on that is that like after each billion of transactions, we generate the thing that is called state blocks. So after each huge chunk of transactions flow into the system, uh, we practically generate a new genesis block that must be by the network, and the history is stored on their archive nodes. So each new node can fully check the whole sys history of blockchain, but doesn't need to store it. It can operate from the uh, current uh, genesis block. Uh, after about uh, uh, speeds, Let's uh, face that each uh, each each what's wrong? Take my take yeah. mine. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. It's working now. Uh, so uh, we must face that each decentralized ecosystem is vulnerable to attacks. It is not possible to build a permissionless decentralized ecosystem that wouldn't be possible to attack. But the thing is that designing a decentralized ecosystem, you must think about uh, the financial cost of attacking the network and make it uh, just uninteresting for the attacker from the financial point of sight. So 
why is like Bitcoin is not going to act all the time? Because it is financially not interesting. Because like you need too much of the resources, and if you have invested uh, so many resources in an attack, it wouldn't bring you much uh, uh, to have the gains because people won't trust it, and uh, the network would be just started over. So. Uh, the financial side is really what protects any consensus, uh, be it proof of work or proof of stake. And of course, there is a centralization risk in any consensus type. In proof of work, uh, it's the capital invested in hardware and pools and exclusive hardware. In proof of stakes, uh, it's the capitals that people have in coins that are uh, often concentrated in the, like, the, the hands of several big players. So we can say that. Um, very often, proof of works uh, are con uh, controlled by pools, uh, and proof of stakes are usually controlled by a couple of whales, and that's and that's a f and that's a fact. But uh, to like try to tackle of that, we think that a good solution could be that we create uh, random random block producers and we create observers who observe the process. That is, uh, and we introduce another thing that is called trust. Yeah that could be lowered down so it would be very hard to coordinate an attack on the network and it would be very hard to attack it because any attacker involved would lose trust and you would need an insane amount of stake to actually try to manipulate the network in any way. And uh, at last I want to show you like the, the block structure of how we built our chain. Uh, we made an approach that we didn't, uh, that we don't make equal nodes. We you know, like distributed them into four main roles. Uh, the metagates as a clients uh, send their transaction to proxy nodes. Uh, they have like the uh, they uh, they keep on them uh, the load of long connections with the clients that are always slow, and they protect the network from them. They uh, keep them in bulk, transform to binary form, and seed them to verifications. That is practically as a network layer of the ecosystem protecting the cores uh, from invalid transactions and from intercontinental transactions. And when we get the transactions to the latency clusters across the globe, we already transfer to them to the cores that synchronize and together forge and sign the blocks and transfer them to torrents that seed the blocks uh, through the network uh, throughout the world so all the users can actually address the torrents, get their balance, get their transactions amount, download the full blocks with signatures, uh, and our archives and everything that's needed. Uh, so that's uh, our thoughts on the solutions of building of uh, fast blockchain. But we already have a couple of companies that have fast blockchains that I think would be hardly utilized in this year and the coming year, and we would see great developments on applications that already address users and are interesting and easy to use. Thank you.